A lot of these questions for the outlines are about different parts of the scientific process. So the student wants to present the conclusion of these people, so the, their study. So that's different from the methodology. That's different from the, the aim or the hypothesis. So let's just make sure we keep that in mind as we go. Uh, like Tibetan mastiffs, Tibetan wolves can withstand hypoxic conditions at high altitudes. Maybe that's a conclusion, but I, wh where's the study, right? I don't feel like we're doing that, so I don't love this. I'll leave it in just in case maybe we don't need to mention the study specifically, but I don't know. It feels like it should say this is the conclusion. Uh, B, both Tibetan mastiffs and Tibetan wolves have mutations in their whatever genes which prevent excess hemoglobin production and boost hemoglobin's oxygen-carrying ability, respectively. Again, this this could be a, a, a conclusion. I mean... I'd love for them to just say that. Is this like a fact that they use to do the study or is this the conclusion of the study? I don't know. It's not being presented as such. Um, C, in uh, addition to preventing excess hemoglobin production, a mutation in Tibetan Mastiff's HBB gene boosts hemoglobin's oxygen carrying ability. Again, it, it, it's conclusion E, right? Like it feels like it could be the conclusion of a study where like, oh, we studied this gene and this is what we found, but why aren't you saying that? So B, D, let's read that. By interbreeding with Tibetan wolves around 24,000 years ago, Tibetan mastiffs acquired the genetic mutations that enabled them to withstand hypoxic conditions. And so we've got the same problem. This, this is annoying, right? I was expecting a choice to just say they concluded that. That's how these usually go. But it didn't work out. So here, here's what we got to do. Um, this D feels like the conclusion to me because... All the others sound like background information that now D is saying that we like learned how to compare these two things, but we just got to go to the bullet points. This is rare, but it happens. And so what do we say? Here, here we go. Wang and colleagues determined, that sounds like a conclusion, that the dogs first acquired these mutations by interbreeding with Tibetan wolves around 24,000 years ago. So yeah, that's this piece. So there you go. Done, right? So many of you were like, oh no, well, what if we, if we had read the bullets first, we would have gotten this faster. I don't think so. I mean, plus you would have gotten other ones slower because there are plenty where we don't need to read the bullet points. So we're really only reading the bullet points if we get to a situation like I just had where I got down through all the answers and I didn't really have one that was obviously correct. So sometimes it's because we didn't really understand the goal of the question. Maybe there was two goals and we only focused on one. Here, though, it was very clear. Like I was expecting them to just say this study concluded that and they didn't. They made it harder by leaving that part out. But there's a bullet point that just says the conclusion. So after I read them all, I'm like, okay, let's go find that conclusion. And then one of them will match that. And it wasn't hard. So it, it's not a problem for me when these outline questions deviate from the normal process. I can adjust. And that is a, an amazing thing to be able to do because that's what the SAT is all about. We have patterns, we have rules, we have strategies. But then we also have these unpredictable pieces, these things that kind of break the rules occasionally, and we've got to be able to adjust and be flexible. If you are just looking for a strategy that works in every case, you will be looking forever and you'll be unhappy because that is not how the SAT works.